Hey, what's up, you guys, and welcome to ATV. This is a new series that I'm going to start doing on my YouTube channel. It's called Conspiracy Theories, and it's where I dig deep into the government's secrets. Now, today on the first episode, we're talking about Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy and how their deaths are very similar. Have your history teacher explain this if they can. Abraham Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846. John F. Kennedy was elected to Congress in 1946. Lincoln was elected president in 1860. Kennedy was elected president in 1960. Both were concerned with civil rights. Both wives lost a child while living in the White House. Both presidents were shot on a Friday. Both presidents were shot in the head. Now it gets weird. Lincoln's secretary was named Kennedy. Kennedy's secretary was named Lincoln. Both were assassinated by Southerners. Both were succeeded by Southerners named Johnson. Andrew Johnson, who succeeded Lincoln, was born in 1808. Andrew Johnson, who succeeded Kennedy, was born in 1908. John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated Lincoln, was born in 1839. Lee Harvey Oswald, who assassinated Kennedy, was born in 1939. Both were known by their three names. Both names are composed of 15 letters. Now hang on to your seat. Lincoln was shot at the theater named Ford. Kennedy was shot in a Lincoln car made by Ford. Booth and Oswald were assassinated before their trials. Here's the kicker. A week before Lincoln was shot, he was in Monroe, Maryland. Before Kennedy was shot, he was with Marilyn Monroe. But wait, there's more. Lincoln was shot in a theater, and the assassin went to a warehouse. Kennedy was shot from a warehouse and ran to a theater. Well, that's all I have for this conspiracy theory today. Uh, pretty creepy, pretty disturbing. Um, so uh, whenever you're going to get another conspiracy theory, it's probably going to be right here in front of the infamous green screen in my spinning chair. Now, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next time on ATV. Hey, what's up, you guys? And welcome to ATV. Now, I'm going to be doing another conspiracy theory video. And I apologize that I haven't done one in a while. It's just whenever I'm coming up with a conspiracy theory video, I have to do a lot of research. And... This one took me a long time to get all the stuff together, but uh, I'm really excited to do this. I'm going to do these, these conspiracy theories as much as I can. Um, so let's get started. This video is going to be about dead, quote unquote, dead celebrities and who have uh, theories about them being alive and stuff like that. So we have three people to cover today. And uh, so let's get started. All right. Number three, we're going to be talking about none other than Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman was a comedian slash prankster. He always wanted the audience to believe in something, but then he'll turn it right back around and do something completely different that would shock them completely bad. He did something once with Jerry Lawler where they had a dispute and he punched him in the face live on David Letterman. And everybody believed it. And they were both in on it. That's the thing. Uh, he was such a big prankster until he died of lung cancer in the late 80s. Now here's the thing. Here's the conspiracy theory. Because when he died, nobody believed that he actually died because he pranked so many people and nobody believed that he died. So here's how the theory goes. Years and years later, his brother came out and said that he had a long lost daughter and said that he is actually still alive and living somewhere out of state. Now, I don't know if this to be true, but he went on the news and explained the entire thing. But is it a theory or is it not? You be the judge. All right, the next person we're going to be talking about is Elvis Presley. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. He's dead. You know, he's dead. But I have a few theories to prove that he might still be alive. Now, Elvis was pretty famous for a very long time, for nearly three decades. And most celebrities, even to this day, get tired of the spotlight and want to just walk away from it. So here's my theory. He faked his death just so he could spend more time with his family. Now, 
After he died, a new musician came out who I, I don't remember the name, but I'll put it right here. He sounds just like Elvis. Maybe Elvis wanted to have a fresh start and be a completely different artist like this guy. Look this guy up. He sounds just like him. Keep that in mind. He sounds exactly like Elvis. And there's also theories about him still being alive today, uh, still roaming around, but I haven't seen much evidence except for this this guy that sings just like him. So this theory still kind of remains a mystery. All right, the third and final person I'm going to be talking about is another musician, and it's none other than Michael Jackson. Now, Michael Jackson had it pretty bad. He been sing he's been singing since he was a little child, and up to age 50 when he passed away. Now, I can see why this guy wanted to fake his own death if he did. He was going through a rough time. I mean, having these uh, child molestation theories brought on to him, and it's 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 depressing, but it's true. And um, supposedly he faked his death and moved out of state, just like Andy Kaufman did. Now, this is the most strangest part of this theory, is that when Michael Jackson died, supposedly, he uh, still made music and made three new albums since his death. And I find that to be very strange. How could you still be, how could you die and have enough material to last you forever? Now, most uh, musicians, when they die, they have pre-recorded music. Now, here's where, the, here's where the theory catches on. When you listen to some of his newest songs, it doesn't, it sounds like Michael Jackson, but it does, it, it's, it, it sounds a little off. It sounds like when he died, somebody hired somebody that sounds like him to sing these new songs. L literally, go look up on YouTube some of his newest songs, and something about the music just doesn't sound right. I would play them here, but I don't want to get copyrighted. But they sound very off. So if you listen to them, they sound like somebody else is doing an impression, not the actual person. Well, there you go, guys. There's my conspiracy theory. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate everything that I get from any video. And uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I will answer everything. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. I'm working very hard on stuff right now, so expect stuff pretty soon. Um, I'm Austin Taylor, and you've been watching ATV. Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to ATV. Now, here's another conspiracy theory video. I'm sorry I haven't made videos in a while. I've just been really, really busy, but I'm getting back into it. And uh, this conspiracy theory is about the moon landing. Now, this is just a theory. Now, every single one of these videos are just a theory and or myth, so don't get offended if what I'm saying offends you at all, because even I think about these things a lot. In a way, I do think they're true, and in a way, I do think they're fake, but I still tell them because they are conspiracy theories. That's why they're called that. So this one's about the moon landing, and um, basically how the myth goes is that we never made it to the moon. Well, we did eventually years into the future, but we, the U.S. Americans, wanted to beat the Russians to the moon, and so the way to do it was to fake it. Now, supposedly the moon landing was filmed on a sound stage in uh, Los Angeles, and it was filmed by none other than Stanley Kubrick. Now, Stanley Kubrick directed The Shining, Clockwork Orange, 2001. Now, 2001, that movie came out a year before the moon landing, and it was to see if he could capture the moon landing and have us believe it. That The 2001 A Space Odyssey was pretty much to see if it could work, if the whole moon landing could work at all. And it did. It did work. We all believed it. The... Uh, the moon landing happened, and we all believed it. Even if you look into the documentary Room 237, it's a documentary about The Shining, Stanley Kubrick hides things in the movie that relate to the moon landing, like the shirt on Danny's, Danny's um, 
sh uh, sweater that says Apollo 11. And the one scene where Danny is going into the room 237 and on the key, uh, all you can see is room 237. And the only two words you can make out of that is moon and room. Moon room. And that is supposed the room where he was filming the moon landing footage. Now in the scene of The Shining where Jack is yelling at his wife and he says, do you have any single thought of my responsibilities? Do you know what this could do to my career? You know what happens, you know what this could do to my future? He says, he goes into an ongoing rant about that and supposedly that was Stanley Kubrick yelling at his wife when she found out that he was faking the moon footage. Now I know that this is hard to believe, and even I'm having trouble believing it myself because it does sound kind of ridiculous, but it does make sense in a way. So that is my conspiracy theory for now, and I will be making more of these in the future, I promise. So uh, thank you for watching. Hey, what's up, you guys, and welcome to ATV. This is a conspiracy theory video once again, and just for the record, uh, my 9-11 video is gone, if you haven't noticed. Um, YouTube took it down, or well, blocked it, and I deleted it because nobody could watch it, uh, and, I'm, and, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm furious. It was a 9-11 tribute, and they took it down. Yeah, I'm furious that they took one of my videos down. And I ain't done with you yet, YouTube. I'm not done with you yet. I'm going to keep my calm for the rest of this video. But we ain't through, buddy. We ain't through, buddy boy. Okay, now let's get to the conspiracy theory. Alright, this conspiracy theory is about the number 23. What is the number 23? It's just a number, right? You would think that, but it's not. The number 23 actually uh, is very weird when you think about it. If you look it up, there's all kinds of things about it, a bunch of facts, and I'm going to tell you the ones I can remember anyway. So if you do know what I'm talking about, there was actually a movie called The Number 23 starring Jim Carrey, and in that movie they released pretty much most of the facts that I'm going to be telling you now. So uh, yeah, let's do this. First things first, um, the date that the Titanic sank, 4-15-1912. You add that up, you get 23. The day of 9-11, add that up, you get 23. The tilt of the Earth's axis is at a 23 degree angle. Julius Caesar was stabbed 23 times. The year that Kurt Cobain died, in 1994, add that up, you get 23. Our bodies hold 46 chromosomes, 23 per each parent. Our blood circulates through the body every 23 seconds. And that's just a few facts. Look it up online, look up the number 23 facts. You're gonna find a whole list of stuff that relate to the number 23. Even Jim Carrey himself, who starred in the movie, was disturbed by all the facts. Yeah disturbed. Well that's all for this conspiracy theory video. I, don't, I know it's not a very long video and I apologize for that but I'm kind of furious right now with YouTube. You got it coming YouTube. You got it coming. Anyway, see you next time on ATV. Hey what's up you guys? Welcome to ATV and this is uh, Hey, what's up, guys? It's time for another conspiracy theory video. This one's kind of crazy, and this one is proved to be true because I have proof this time. It may not be the best proof ever, but it's proof. Um, this conspiracy theory is about the Mandela effect. And I know what you guys are probably asking Mandela effect? What's that? Well, I'll tell you, the Mandela Effect is something that you remember to be called, but come to find out it's completely different. That's what the Mandela Effect is. And I got a couple here to read to you that are driving me absolutely insane. 
Number one, when I was a kid, I used to read these series of books about bears. It's a little cartoon book. And I remember it was called the Baron Stain Bears. Baron Stain. Baron Stain. Come to find out it's Baron Steen. This kind of stuff really messes with my head because there's a bunch of them like this. The cartoon series, The Flintstones, we all remembered it to be Flynn Stones. Flynn Stones. Come to find out, it's actually Flint Stones. That one really messed me up. I mean, come on. It was Flint Stones. Flint Stones. It was never, ever in my lifetime Flint Stones. The cartoon series Looney Tunes. Tunes was spelled T O O N S, like tunes, cartoons. Come to find out it's actually T U N E S for tunes, like a music tune. Why? I don't know, but it was always tunes, T O O N S. The restaurant Chick fil A. I remember the word chick to be spelled C H I C. Chick fil A. No, now it's got a K in it. Chick fil A. That's just a, a simple one. I don't know if that one's really true or not, but uh, that's one of them. In the movie Snow White, the famous quote was Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. Come to find out it's actually Magic Mirror on the Wall. In the movie Star Wars, the quote is Luke, I am your father. Everybody said Luke, I am your father. But no, it's no, I'm your father. In the opening song to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, it, it was, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. But now, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. In the movie Jaws, the famous quote is, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Now it's, you're gonna need a bigger boat. In the movie Forrest Gump, the quote was, life is like a box of chocolates. But now it's life was like a box of chocolates. The TV show Sex in the City. I don't watch that show, but this is a part of it. We all called it Sex in the City. But come to find out it's actually Sex and the City. And I have proof that one of their products back in the day said in instead of and. But they make it out like it's not even a big deal. Well, thank you guys for watching this conspiracy theory video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Fun? Fun? Okay. Please give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time on ATV. Hey, what's up, you guys? And welcome to another Conspiracy Theory video. This one's about Disney's subliminal messages. Warning, this video is not for children because I'm going to be talking about some mature things. So do not watch if you are under the age of 17. So, just so you're aware, don't watch it. So Disney has had a lot of subliminal messages throughout their entire films, whether it's sexual related, uh, Holocaust related, uh, Illuminati related, it's all in these movies. And I'm gonna be talking about a lot of them. The first ones I think we should get out of the way are the, um, the sexual subliminal messages and that be some of that will be showing on the screen right now. As you can see, um, it's the poster for Tangled, and it doesn't look like nothing's wrong with it, but obviously something's wrong because it spells out the word sex in her hair that's tangled on the other guy in the picture. And uh, right here is a poster of uh, The Lion King, which you can obviously see, that looks that does not look like a lion. <laughs> Looks like a butt. And uh, this was on the original VHS tape of The Little Mermaid. And as you can clearly see in this picture, which you're gonna see now, it is, uh, yeah, let's just go on. Here's an old cartoon. Um, I have no words. 
I definitely have it. don't have any words. I mean, it's obvious what it is, but why? All right, now we're going to be talking about the um, subliminal messages that were Holocaust related. Uh, in this picture that you're seeing right now is a uh, scene out of 101 Dalmatians. And you can clearly see on the dots of the Dalmatian is a uh, swastika. I believe that's what, they, what it's called. Um, and that's obviously Nazi related. There, there's even a Donald Duck cartoon that was banned from television, which I saw it, where uh, Donald Duck is a Nazi. <laughs> oh, Disney. Oh, Disney. Now, Disney is a very evil organization. It may look friendly, but it's not friendly. Clearly, you can see on the logo that it spells out 666, which we all know means the devil. All right, this last conspiracy theory is about Walt Disney himself. Now, supposedly when he died, they uh, froze his body and buried it deep down underground of Walt Disney. Now, supposedly what, what's, what, what the plan was, was to see if in the future, if they find a cure, they can revive him and he could come back to life. Now, the television show iCarly um, made a big joke about it. Um, called the Dingo Channel and the character Spencer and Freddy were both looking deep down underground Dingo Studios to look for Dingo's frozen head. Now I don't know if, if that's a fact or fiction but I it makes a lot of sense. So thank you guys for watching this conspiracy theory video. If you like it give it a thumbs up. I appreciate every feedback I can get. So yeah, I'm Austin Taylor and thank you for watching.